In this video I'd like to show the calculation of the lunar orbit around the Earth and the Antikythera mechanism. This includes the moon phases, the calculation of the moon position against the fixed stars and finally its differing speeds in the anomalistic months. Close to Earth the moon moves faster and remote from Earth the moon has a slower pace. So let's start with the simple thing, the lunar phases. In the course of the year, the sun moves in front of the starry sky through the 12 zodiac signs. Likewise the moon, but not in the course of the year, but once a month. At the beginning, the solar and lunar pointers overlap. It's new moon. One week further, we have a half moon. The sun only moved a bit, but the moon is three zodiac signs further. After another week we have a full moon. The moon is exactly opposite the sun. Then again half moon and then again new moon. One month has passed now. Sun and moon are both one zodiac sign further than at the beginning. For the moon phases we need only two gears. They are attached to the solar and lunar pointers. On the holder for the solar pointer there is a crown wheel and the lunar pointer is mounted on a gear wheel which has the same number of teeth as the crown wheel and runs in it. Therefore with each rotation of the lunar pointer following the solar pointer the moon axis rotates exactly once around itself indicating all the phases of the moon one after the other. So this is quite simple. Now we come to the calculation of the moon position before the starry sky. A solar year lasts a little bit more than 365 and a quarter days, which already was known in ancient times. The moon revolves around the earth a little bit more than 13 times a year. But since the earth also revolves around the sun in the same period, these 13 rotations appear to us as 12 months. After 12 lunations from new moon to new moon, however, still 10 to 11 days are missing to complete the solar year. Therefore the 12 lunar months and the solar year do not fit together because they are of different lengths. After 19 solar years it is however that the moon stands practically again at the same position as in the beginning. Therefore in 19 solar years the moon quite exactly turns 254 times around the earth which appears to us as 235 months. This connection was already known in ancient times and is modeled here in the Antikythera mechanism using gear wheels. With these gears the numerical ratio 254 by 19 is calculated. This results in the different speeds of rotation of the solar and lunar pointer. 254 by 19 is 13.36842 and that's the ratio at which the lunar pointer turns faster than the solar pointer. So let's take a closer look at these gear wheels one after another. At the very top we have the setting wheel. It's like a time machine. If we turn it forward we go into the future. And if we turn it backwards we go into the past. This style A1 engages the big main wheel B1 with the four spokes that the Antikythera mechanism is known for. Under this large main wheel is gear B2. Since B1 and B2 are directly coupled to each other, they rotate at the same speed once per solar year. This is also exactly what you can see on the solar pointer which is directly coupled with these two gears. The gear wheel B2 has 64 T's. It meshes with the adjacent gear C1 which has 38 T's. 64 divided by 38 is the same as 32 divided by 19 and that equals to 1.68421. Therefore C1 turns more than one and a half times faster than B2. Below C1 is C2 with 48 T's. Both turn at the same speed. C2 meshes with D1 which has 24 T's. This gives us another doubling of speed. Under gear D1 lies D2 on the same axis. It has 127 T's. It meshes with the adjacent gear E2 with 32 T's. 
32 divided by 19 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 127 divided by 32 equals to 254 divided by 19. That equals to 13.36842. This corresponds to 254 lunar orbits in 19 solar years, or a little bit more than 13 of the third lunar orbits per year. Now this could be led directly to the lunar pointer, and in fact in my replica I actually build it that way. Orbital velocity of the moon. In the original Anticacebra mechanism another detail is implemented which also influences the lunar orbit, namely the different orbital velocity of the moon on its rotation around the Earth. In the proximity of the Earth it moves faster and the further the moon is away from the Earth the slower it becomes until it has reached the point farthest from the Earth. Then it speeds up again until it reaches the point closest to Earth and so on. This different orbital velocity accounts for about two days of deviation compared to a pure circular orbit. Amazingly, this is also modeled in the Anticacera mechanism. The gear E2, which we have just seen before and which reproduces the average length of the month, is not led directly to the lunar pointer and instead down into the mechanism to gear E5. This additional gear engages K1, which in turn moves the wheel K2, but in a very special way, which I will show in a moment. And K2 in turn engages E6, which then moves the lunar pointer via E1 and B3. All four additional wheels, E5, K1, K2 and E6, have the same number of Ds, namely 50 each. With a normal coupling, this would result in neither acceleration nor deceleration. Now comes the special thing, because K1 and K2 have offset axes. So they are not exactly on top of each other. They have a so-called pin and slot coupling, which means that there is a pin on gear K1 that engages in a slot in gear K2. This pin either pulls the second gear behind it or pushes it in front, depending on whether the pin is on the outside or inside of the slot or somewhere in between. This way the different orbital velocity of the moon around the earth in the so-called animalistic months is reproduced quite well. From gear E6 this motion is transmitted upward to gear E1 which in turn transmits it to gear B3. B3 is directly coupled with the axis of the lunar pointer. Finally I will show this for two years, first with and secondly without animated gears.